Hello friends, welcome to this session of R for research and research methodology. In this session, we are going to study an important experimental design, randomized complete block designs. Randomized complete block designs are different than completely randomized designs. Completely randomized designs work well when population is relatively homogeneous. When population has internal heterogeneity, then variation in uh, each group of the of that population will affect the overall variance of the population. Therefore, to counter for internal heterogeneity, each variation of that population will be separated into different blocks. Experimental units are grouped into blocks according to known or suspected variation. Variations such as soil quality, temperature, sunlight, moisture, wind current, sex, education, socioeconomic status. Many different variations are there in population. If we uh, think about uh, bacterial strains, then bacterial strains from each location will have variation. Within each block, the conditions are as homogeneous as possible, but between blocks, large differences may exist. We will understand with this schematic. Here, these three blocks are there, B1, B2 and B3. And to these three blocks, three treatments are given, T1, T2 and T3. Yeah. And each block has all these three treatments in B1, T1, T2, T3 is there, B2, T2, T3, T1 is there. All three treatments are getting representation in all these three blocks. And uh, to uh, population in B1 block, these three treatments are assigned in completely randomized manner. For B2 also, these three treatments are assigned in completely randomized manner. And after completion of the data collection, analysis of the results is done taking blocking in consideration. And the following model is fitted there. Response is equal to intercept plus effect of input plus effect of blocking plus error. Here, response is the uh, measurement which we have carried out after blocking. Then intercept is the effect in absence of input variable and in absence of blocking variable. Then effect of input is the effect caused by input variable. Effect of blocking is the effect caused by blocking variable. And error is the uh, systematic error of the process. Random block designs are uh, completely flexible designs because they can have any number of treatments and can have any number of blocks. But sometimes if number of treatments and number of blocks increase, complexity of the result increases and interpretation of results become difficult. But theoretically, these are completely flexible designs. Then this provide more accurate results when we compare those results to completely randomized design. Because in uh, randomly blocked designs, the wa those variations which are there within the groups, which are se get separated from each other. In randomly randomized designs, these variations cause large variation in the output. Then these are relatively easy to analyze statistically. Even when missing data is there, that missing data affects the uh, individual block only. Then this allows calculation of unbiased error for specific treatments. Though that bias can be uh, from the blocking variables. We are separating the blocking variables, therefore that bias will not be there. And when we calculate these disadvantages of these treatments, these are not suitable for large number of treatments because their blocks become very large if the number of treatments is more and we have to uh, involve uh, many volunteers or uh, we have to collect many experimental objects uh, to uh, construct the block then these are not suitable when complete block contains considerable vari variability if within block variability is uh, very large then complete block designs are not suitable other designs are available and we will discuss those in later videos then interactions between block and treatment, if interactions are there, then those interactions effect, increase the error. We need to block the population properly so that the blocking sample the entire range of variation within the block. Random block design is the most widely used design because it is most successful if all the variations in a particular experiment are controlled by blocking. And when this is done, there is no need to use more complex designs. Random block designs are easy to implement and easy to analyze. A blocked experimental design can be called as complete only when all the treatments are there in all the blocks. 
and here we will see that using R and we will implement completely randomized block designs in R. The first experiment, it is the production of amylase by four strains in three fermenters. The first will get the fermenters, three fermenters for all the four strains. Therefore, these three R1 fermenter, R2 fermenter and R3 fermenter, these three fermenters will be replicated four times. Then strain is there. We have four strains. Each strain shall be there for each fermenter. Therefore, these four strains will be replicated each for three times. Then, this is the result obtained after uh, carrying out completely randomized block experiment. And these results are yields of amylase in units. Then we will close. Then we will save these results in a data frame. This is the data frame. We will run this. And we will store that in data frame. And we will see what is there in the data frame. And this is the data table. In this data table, we can see that this strain A is there in each fermenter. In R1, R2, R3, strain A is incubated. Then R1, R2, R3 fermenters, strain B is incubated. And C is also there in all three fermenters. And D is also there in all three fermenters. All the four strains got cultivated in all the three fermenters. Now we have the data in the form of data frame DF and on this DF we will carry out ANOVA analysis of variance and for that the results will be stored in an object mod1 model1 is equal to analysis of variance is the function and in bracket the formula is the first argument this is the formula yield is determined by strain and fermenter. This plus sign is for additive effect and data is provided through the data frame df. We will run this. Here we are interested in the probability. That probability is 0.02. This probability tells us that we can't accept the null hypothesis. We have to say that there is difference in individual strains. Then uh, for fermenters also, we can see that p value is 0.01. Again, we cannot accept null hypothesis. We have to reject the null hypothesis and by rejection of null hypothesis, we have to accept that there is difference in uh, yield from different fermenters. In the second experiment, a restaurant chain wants to know if the sale of three dishes which are being sold across six restaurants of that chain are same or different. Six restaurants replicated three times for the three dishes. Menu represent the dishes. These three dishes are replicated six times for these six restaurants. And these are the 18 results from the sales of these three dishes across the six restaurants. These results are stored in the data frame using function data.frame. And this data frame contain the restaurant vector, the menu vector and the sales vector. We will run this code. Store in the data frame. In this data frame, we can clearly see that each restaurant has all the three items. And second restaurant also has all the three items. Third restaurant, fourth, fifth, sixth, all have these three dishes served. We'll run the model. Model is analysis of variance. Sales is the response variable. Menu and restaurant are the explanatory variables. And this data comes from the data frame df. We'll run this mod 3. Here the ANOVA results are there, but we are more interested in probability. Therefore, we will look for summary. In the summary, probability for menu is 0.0319 and that is significant to the level 0.05. But the probability for restaurants is not significant as it is very large as compared to 0.05. And we have to say that there is no difference in sales of these three dishes across the restaurants. Differences are there in the sales of these three dishes. We will look at the third experiment before concluding. It's a weedicide experiment. A farmer want to test effect of five weedicides on his three plots. Therefore, blocking factor will be the three plots and treatment will be the five weedicides. We have, repli we have implemented that design here. These are the blocks replicated five times. Then these are the treatments replicated three times. And these are the results. We'll run that. And these results are stored in a data frame, DF4. We'll see what is there in the DF4. In all the blocks, all the five 
treatments are replicated. We'll look at the analysis of variance model. We'll run that. And here the percent killing of the weeds is explained by these factors treatment and block. And this data comes from data frame DF. We'll look for the model. And in this model, we can see the degree of freedom and all those information. And we are more interested in summary. P value for treatment that is weedicide 0.08 and P value for block that is 0.038. Here we can see that this weedicide doesn't have a significant difference on the percent killing, but blocks have significant difference on the percent killing. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please share this with your friends. Please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. If you want notifications of my new videos, please click bell icon. Thank you.